I'm here to kind of wet your whistle or, or uh, uh, get your appetite going for looking at prisons, jails, uh, the corrections industry as a marketplace that you may be going into. Now, I had uh, lunch with Vince and John. I think they're in here somewhere. Uh, and they were both telling me that uh, they already have some routes. Uh, they stop and service vending machines in corrections facilities. How many of you all do that right now? So a lot of you are doing vending machines <laughs> in, in there. How many of you are actually doing a full commissary inside the jail? Well, I know these guys are. So that's, so, so what I'm show, talking to you about is an opportunity of what you are already halfway there on, okay? You're already making a stop at the facility. You're already doing a lot of these things. So what I'm here to talk to you about is maybe taking that one step further. And so uh, let me jump into this. Unfortunately, I didn't come up with this logo, so please don't sue me for the copyright on that. But the real, the real thing is about how crime continues to pay and pay and pay and pay. How many of you all seen me speak at this conference uh, in Vegas? Did anybody come? I know David. Good. Okay. Well, good. Uh, if I tell any of the same jokes, just, you know, just forgive me, all right? Um, but let me, let me step back for just a minute, and let's think about the marketplace. Okay, it's hard to think of corrections as a marketplace, right? Jail's a marketplace. It's a vertical. So I want you to think about it as a vertical for just a minute. Uh, pretty disturbing statistics, actually. There's... Uh, uh, more jails and prisons than there are colleges across the U.S. And every county pretty much has a jail. Every city pretty much has a jail. Every state has multiple jails. And not to be outdone, my friends uh, from the federal government have many uh, facilities. So there are over 2.4 million people incarcerated right now in the United States. Again, I say these are some disturbing facts, but it's true. And over 700 out of every 100,000 people are incarcerated. It's a little less than 1%, but it's a lot of people. So what does this mean for you in this room? It literally means we have a captive market to go after, right? Sorry for the pun. Um, I apologize for that one. So, um, so again, feel free to stop me along the way. So... When we look at corrections as a vertical, as a marketplace, there, is, uh, there are a lot of providers in this space already. So I apologize if I'm too loud. I feel like I'm loud. But, um, there's a lot of people in this space already. There's phone companies. That's probably the number one profit-driven center inside a prison or inside a jail are the phone companies. There's cafeterias, food preparation people. Uh, you've got security of all kinds, either outsourced or, you know, just people that are hired there. You've got bonding agents, you've got lawyers, you've got me. I'm a technology provider. That's what I do. I'm a software company. Uh, that's, that's all I do. I don't sell food. I don't sell commissary. Hopefully, I'm going to get you interested in selling the, in, and using my technology to do it. The last point here is retail and wholesale commissary providers. And I'm talking about, I'm not talking about the vending machine sitting in a day room uh, where inmates fight over quarters or, or, you know, whatever it is to get to it. I'm talking about a full blown out point of sale system that inmates can use to buy and purchase commissary. Mama can put money on her, boy, her son's account or boyfriend account uh, and uh, allow them to use that money inside the facility. How many of you have ever spent time in jail? Right, I never get an answer. Oh, you got one back there. Right. <laughs> I never really get any takers on that, so thank you for volunteering. Uh, no, um, we have, uh, if, when you're inside a facility, you really have only kind of two links to the outside world. One is to make phone calls to your, your boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever or to order a commissary. A commissary typically is defined as honey buns, uh, sodas maybe, water, uh, chips, maybe a clean pair of underwear, you know, stuff like that, uh, soap, those kinds of things. So 
those are typically what commissary is defined as. How it's typically done is inmate, there, there are two or three different ways to do it. Uh, inmates can order through our software commissary, which goes to your warehouse. You pack it up and you ship it to the, and you take it to the facility and drop it off. Sometimes you drop it off, inmates hand it out. Sometimes you actually are responsible for delivering it. It just depends. Every situation is a little different. And um, the other is to actually have a physical store inside the jail. Uh, that's a little less common. I don't see that as often. But in the bigger facilities, that's, that's a fairly common thing. So commissary is a marketplace. It's a huge marketplace. Um, uh, you know, Keith Group recently did... Uh, over a billion dollars in correctional sales. I believe that number is as best I could figure out uh, what they were doing. I think they have roughly a 40% market share. Now it's, it's divided between wholesale and retail and there's a lot of numbers that go into that. Trinity is another big one. They merged recently with Swanson's and there's a lot going on there. Um, and uh, the estimate that I, best estimate I've been able to come up with is about a 1.9 to 2.3 billion dollar marketplace. But all that doesn't really matter. What matters is right here. There's probably less than 100 companies that are actually doing this in this space. A lot of them are very, very small. Maybe they're providing the local county sheriff with a commissary company. A lot of times uh, jails decide to operate their own commissaries and you just be their supplier. So there's a great market there as well. So. You've got both the retail and the wholesale opportunities in this market. So, like I said, about 80% of the people in this space do less than a million dollars in volume that we've been able to identify. So how do you tap in? Anybody interested yet? Nobody? Okay. Um, so a minute ago I told you a little bit about how the jail actually works, how the process actually works. And... Um, We've picked this guy up, uh, since you're already familiar with this, uh, we picked him up uh, and uh, he, had, uh, he had spent his night at the strip club, had a lot of ones in his pockets, and uh, we picked him up on a DUI charge. We bring him to the jail and that money is a potential problem, right? It's all kinds of opportunity for a guard to shake him down, somebody to steal the money, misreporting of money. So he has $35 in ones in his pocket. So we're going to take him over and put him uh, in front of a booking machine. I'll show you a picture of that here in a minute. A booking machine, a kiosk that we put inside the lobby. That inmate's going to immediately put all of their money into that machine. That money is now instantly available. We're a cloud-based company, so everything is done instantly. And so as soon as that inmate puts that money into that, account, to that kiosk, he can now spend it when he gets behind bars. He can use it for phone calls, use it to order product, those kinds of things. So the reason we do that instantly is we get it out of the system. It's now accounted for. So from a county auditing perspective, a lot of times, you know, if he only had $35 on it, but he said he had 37 then he's going to sue the county for his $2, and now you got to get county attorney involved. Imagine all the difficulties of that. The reason I'm going through this level of detail with you is just tell you that the jails and the county marketplaces, are, and, the, and the state even, they want this technology. They're, they want to partner with you to provide it to them. So we put that money in his account. He's instantly spending the account. These guys are not, you know, all the time really good with their money. If they've got the money, they're going to spend it. So um, he's going to immediately probably go back to the back. He's going to be there for a few days. He's going to log into the kiosk that we've put in the back back there. And he's going to log into his account, and he's going to see how much money he's got, and he's going to start spending it. And typically, uh, they'll start buying chips, sodas, and all those things instantly. And every jail is a little different, but in a lot of cases, most cases, you're delivering his order once a week, once the, twice a week, once a day. It just depends on whatever you've set up with that particular facility. So a lot of you raised your hand when I said you're, you're operating a vending machine in a, in a correctional facility at this moment. So imagine adding commissary. You're already stopping there, right? 
So imagine adding the commissary to that stop. So now you're just dropping off, you know, bags of potato chips or whatever it is that they've ordered. And so partnering with Lightspeed integrated into the software just makes it very simple. So that's why Dave has, has me here. Yeah, so let me tell you about how we work. Um, actually, I'm going to skip to that here in just a second, if you don't mind. But the, the point I'm trying to get at this particular point is you're already stopping there. So I'm trying to introduce you to the idea of thinking about reaching out to your county jail or your, your state penitentiary, wherever you're already stopping, and saying, hey, who's doing your commissary? Can I bid on that? I'd like to get in on that. And when you partner with somebody like us, I was going to show you that all the technology that you're offering to the jail is what they're wanting. And you're going to give it to them for free. So I'll tell you how. <clears throat> so this is just completing the rest of that, cha that trail that we just talked about. So inmate Smith has made his order. It's sent electronically to you all. You're packing it, bagging it. Every jail is a little different, but most of them want to have it in clear bags so they can see it and, you know, think those kinds of things. They may even want to check out who your, uh, some of your employees are because they want to make sure they weren't former inmates who are trying to sneak things in the bags. Uh, and so to your question a minute ago, you're either dropping that off and they're passing it out or maybe you're having to uh, hire a, somebody who's off duty to go hire, uh, pull it out for you, put it out for you or you're just dropping it at the door. And a lot of times, too, they're operating their own commissary, and so you're just dropping off product at that point, which is even better, you know what I'm saying. So um, you deliver it. Boy's out of money, so he's got to put more money in the system, right? So that's how it works. And so Mama comes onto the website. She goes to a kiosk. We stick, stick in the lobby. We have an app. We have an 800 number. They make deposits. And uh, the cycle repeats every week. Uh, Kevin, what was the number we saw on about per weekly orders uh, in a county jail? It was about 37 to $40 roughly a week, maybe somewhere in that order per inmate. Some inmates order two or $300 and some don't have any money. So, but on average, that's the number that we see. <clears throat> so now we're to Dave's question, who am I and why am I here? So this particular kiosk right here is what you see is what I've stuck in the booking area for an inmate. That inmate has stuck his money into this account. Now it's all in an inmate trust fund. It's accounted for. It's auditable. The state shows up and audits the sheriff's office. They love it because it's all here. There's no more hanky-panky. There's no more dropping off you know, $30 at the door and 15 of it shows up in his account. So it's all accounted for in this accounting system, and the sheriffs really do want this type of technology. They want to be clean audits, that's number one. So what we do is we provide a complete technology solution that does everything I've talked about, including an inmate point of sale um, technology. So I don't know if I have a photo of it, but basically imagine it's a flat screen TV with a metal case on it that sits on the wall inside of an inmate cell. And in there, you would put in your menus. You load up your menu. You load up whatever the jail has requested that you sell to that facility that you all have worked out. And you have all your pricing right there on it. And then uh, inmates are logging in. They're seeing how much money they have. And they start making their orders. Um, that is what our system does. And um, so we do everything from uh, managing those deposits to auditing, to phone system deposit technologies. Now, when the inmate gets out of jail, and they still have $32.18 on their account. That's an, that's an auditing nightmare also for the counties at, the, at this moment uh, because it's uncollected funds, right? So you got two choices. You can hand the guy cash, but you don't want to keep cash in jail. It's a bad thing. You can also uh, write them a check. A lot of these people are unbanked. Where are they going to cash a $32.18 check that they're not going to lose half of it at a check cashing place? Uh, so what we do is we provide debit cards. Uh, and the debit cards are immediately loaded with their balance on it. And now they are out of the system. They're gone. They're off the books. They have, walk out the door with a MasterCard loaded with their funds on it. 
and they run to Walmart and spend it right away. So that's, uh, that's uh, how we deal with it all. So again, I'm talking a lot about technology that you can bring to the jail, and we can go a lot deeper if one of you wants to talk to me individually. But I'm also going to dive into what I'm, I'm starting to call kind of a virtual commissary in, in a way, and it doesn't even involve you uh, delivering product. So let's talk about that. So take, this is uh, technology with a company like ours. We're cloud-based. There's only a handful of us in this space. Um, and we only solely do corrections. That's what we do. And so um, you'll see that we've introduced some various tablet products now. This is our particular tablet, tablet that we put into the facilities. It's a Windows-based tablet. There are other providers in the space that have tablets as well. And, you know, the idea of tablets for inmates, that seems ridiculous, right? I, I, when I first heard that, I, I was very much against it. But especially in the county jail marketplace, these are sometimes glorified babysitting situations. And so the more you can keep a guy occupied, the less trouble they really are. So um, there have been a, a big movement in the tablet space in this industry. And so what we've done is we've introduced our tablet and on our tablet, it has a premium section. And the premium section does things like charge you for playing games, uh, uh, watching movies, reading books, music, and we have other things, emails and text systems, video conferencing. It's basically like a FaceTime for inmates, video visitation, which is a wonderful situation because if mama's in Florida and you're in jail in Pulaski, Tennessee, you know, we know from a recidivism standpoint, the more we can connect family members to each other, the less chance of them coming back sometimes. But it does decrease it. So we want to, we want to increase that interaction. So if mama's in Florida and you're in Tennessee, mama can just literally go to our website, schedule a visitation on her laptop or even on her cell phone, and she can connect with the inmate and they can visit. That entire visitation is recorded for jail purposes, and so they can go back and review them at any time and listen to them and make sure that, uh, you know, they didn't hide the guns or something, you know. So uh, there's a lot of great uh, technology features, again, that the jails are wanting, and I'm giving you the chance to provide it to them. So uh, when I talk about virtual commissary, oh, I'm sorry, go back. All of these things are basically virtual commissary options. Because you're, you're going to charge, let me give you an, a good example. Uh, we're in Putnam County, Tennessee, and we had in, inmates could send an email for 50 cents to an outside party. And, you know, they, I think that jail has maybe 200 inmates. In a month period, they might have sent, they might have sent 300. Not, not a lot, right? 50 cents make a dollar, 150 bucks. But we turned it, we used the same exact technology and turned it on to text messaging. The next month they spent over, they sent over 17,000 texts in one month at 50 cents a piece. So use those numbers and all of a sudden that's a nice virtual con You didn't have to deliver a single product, <laughs> you know. So typically how it works is the jails want their cut. We want our cut and you got your cut. So. Between the three of us, uh, we're typically making some pretty decent money off of really doing nothing than, other than them sending a text or an email. Again, to the point that this is uh, technology that they want. Every single text, every single email is recorded in the system. It's being, they're able to pull it up. They're able to introduce it in a court of law. If there is a situation where they've used the word gun or something like that, it's going to flag it. We have the technology that flags keywords, and so if they use the word murder or they, you know, kill or whatever, then it's going to flag those things, send them in. And so the jails are loving this technology because it's helping them do their jobs so much better. So, but again, virtual commissary is what I'm calling that. So I'm going to coin that word, Kevin. 
Um, so now it's your turn. I've introduced a great technology platform that I think levels the playing field for anything that you might want to do. Now it's your turn. You told me you're already stopping there, and a lot of you. Or if you're not, you should be. Uh, I'm trying to convince you. You guys have large warehouses. You've got the delivery systems. You've got all the packing and fulfillment capabilities. You've got Dave Lightspeed, uh, who can help you make this even more profitable. And you've got established routes, employees. You've got it all. You've already got the infrastructure to do this right now. So, um, show you how you make a little money. Now, I base this off a very small commissary company that I would think you could probably maybe do a little bit better than what I'm showing you here. But I just assumed you got 40% margins on all your product uh, when you sell it in a jail. Remember, when you sell it in a jail, you're negotiating that price with the jail. So, a Snickers bar, what might be a Snickers bar might cost a dollar twenty on the outside world, you might be able to sell them here for a dollar fifty or a dollar forty five whatever it is uh, you negotiate that rate with the with the jail. Typically, the jails want to see like a some type of uh, actually William could probably answer this better than I can, but you probably want to see a convenience store type pricing model when you go into one of these facilities so when you look at that uh, you 're looking at a 500-bed jail doing half a million dollars plus in sales, and you're cranking that on each facility. So, again, that's a very, very rough estimate. Don't hold me to those numbers, but I think you should. You can kind of see uh, where we're going with that. The jails. So it's typically, uh, actually, William can probably better than I can, but typically, I've seen it roughly in the 25 to 40% range. Uh, that's That would be a, a very rough. Exactly. Now, so, um, but I took some of that into consideration on my last slide. Actually, well, I put some of it in there. But so typically, like I said, remember, your pricing is probably going to be a little bit higher than you would put, say, in a vending machine. Well, maybe in a vending machine in jail might be the same price. I don't know. But have you, do, you, do you experience where you can price things a little higher in a jail than you might somewhere else? Because you're probably already paying a commission, I'm guessing, right? So, I mean, it's the same model. It's just we're getting rid of machines. So... So, when you do products, there are products that are not, you're not going to have Correct. Correct. That, that's a great question. And the question was you know, they have, sometimes they have certain products that you can't sell in a facility. Uh, and that's, that's, that is very true. And uh, that's just something to negotiate with the, with the jail. Well, typically, I've always seen that uh, the, the jail may request, you know, a prison-ready product, and typically they'll accept whatever it is you bring to them that's fairly close to that product. So I haven't seen, uh, I haven't seen, I mean, I guess once in a while there's a jail that's just hardcore, I want shebang potato chips or whatever it is, which is a Keith-based product, and you will be buying those from them, I guess. But uh, hopefully you've marked it up enough to to account for that, but most times I've seen jails be pretty good. You know, bring me something comparable to that, and you're good to go. Um, yeah, you're not going to be you're not going to be selling uh, needles or anything like that <laughs> in there for sure. But uh, you will be selling. Uh, I mean, it's pretty normal stuff: Snickers bars and you know uh, potato chips and things like that. Again, it's going to be specific to the jail, but uh, there are. Uh, a number of jails where you'll be, uh, the, they'll ask you to sell, say, uh, rubber shoes, jail uh, underwear, stuff like that. That's probably not on your normal uh, uh, processing. There are a number of companies that supply those things, Bob Barker and some other ones out there. Um, 
and and those guys, uh, I would say that's that's a very small piece uh, of the pie. Like I, I doubt you're selling soap, for example. Maybe you are. I don't know, but you know that would be something that you would need to add to your to your list, and it would have to be jail approved soap. And so that you may have to get yourself another vendor for that type of soap. Uh, and there are a number of things called indigent kits that you'll be required to provide in some cases. Uh, and those indigents are people who don't have any money, so you'll have to kind of adjust price. Anyway, we'll work with you on all that. Uh, but those kinds of things are out there. Uh, it looks like I jumped ahead of myself when I started talking about virtual commissary before I got there. So this is the, this is the slide I have for that. Uh, the one thing that the one thing that we've released recently in the technology world, as I was talking about the video visitation piece, is when mom wants to schedule that phone call uh, that I talked about on her cell phone, and she's going to her app, and uh, she's going to our app, and she's scheduling her uh, video visitation. <clears throat> she's going to pay thirty-eight cents a minute for that call. Uh, and typically, you know, think about it. if you're in Florida and your son's in Tennessee, 38 cents a minute is nothing compared to having to drive or fly or something like that. We're down in the Bahamas, and they use our system down there, and they have 400 islands. So you can imagine using something like a video visitation is a fantastic uh, scenario for them because going to Nassau is, is a major ordeal for people that don't, just don't have a whole lot of money. So... But again, there's are all opportunities to to make a little money in that virtual commissary that I was talking about. They may have like So typically, how it's set up is uh, <clears throat> these will be put in like a storage dock in the jail, and inmates can pick them up and walk around with them and use them. And typically, we do about one of these for every three inmates. That's typically the number. And they're sitting around in the jail. The jails are coming around. The inmates are logging into them. And we're going to make them automatically have to log out after five minutes if they're not using it for something. So they can't just go, you know, hold it. So uh, they'll be logging into this. Now, All this, we have legal law libraries on here. We have the ability for them to file a grievance against the jail. We have all kinds of things on here that are completely free for the inmate to use this technology that the jail wants. And the premium stuff is where they play the games and things like that. And they're choosing to pay for that. So they're paying uh, $10, get some like 300 minutes of time, something like that. Uh, everyone's a little different, but it's kind of a virtual pl playground. Is what it is. But yes, it's about one for every three inmates. Uh, so there's a couple of different ways to go here. Um, Typically, the jails don't have any money for any of this stuff, right? So they're, they're broke. You know, they don't have any money. So they want you to buy it. So what we do in, in most of the jails that we work with is we provide all this software, everything you see for free. How we make our money is every time Mama puts money on that, on that uh, account, we charge $2.95, just like you do an ATM fee. That's how we make our money. So doesn't cost you anything, uh, that's it. And we also give those deposit kiosks I, I showed you, we give that to the jail for free. Because obviously we wanted to use it because that's how we make our money, right? So those are, those are free to you, free to the jail. And we actually manufacture those kiosks ourselves in Nashville, Tennessee. Now, the inmate pod kiosks I'm talking about and the tablets, we would need to work with you all to figure out how to pay for those. Sometimes the jail's got a little money, they got a little tech budget, maybe 10 grand, something like that. Maybe you got a little money because you're getting a commission on it. Maybe we'll throw some in because we're all gonna make money off this, especially if they're using emails, texts, things like that. So it really just kind of depends on the situation. Um, I will say typically for one of the kiosks that I didn't show you that goes on the wall, those are typically put about one for every 30 to 40 inmates on one of those. So you're not looking at a terrible investment on those kinds of things. Uh, and generally, the commissary providers get their money back really fast on that kind of stuff. So are they wireless, or do they have to be wired through the jail? <clears throat> so the tablets are wireless, obviously. Um, 
That'd be bad if they were wired on it. Uh, no, they're wireless. The tablets are all wireless. The kiosks on the wall uh, can be wireless, but typically they're uh, PoE hardwired. So you don't need electric to them, which is great. Uh, it saves a lot on the install. But uh, by being power over Ethernet, uh, you do have to install data to those. So, yeah, so. good questions. Anything else? So, so this is just basically what I was just saying, which is, you know, we feel we've leveled the playing field. As a matter of fact, I don't think we've leveled the playing field. I think we're leading the field uh, in the technology side of the corrections industry. So, um, you know, what we do, too, is if, if you're interested, if you're real interested, what I'd like to do is I've got cards up here. Feel free to email me or text me or call me or anything. Uh, me or my team. Kevin's back here. Kevin Burke is with me. And um, call us, and we can talk to you about how to re how to put together how to respond to an RFP. Maybe how to talk to your jail about doing this. Hell, we'll even show up and do it with you. Okay? Because we want you to get this business. Uh, we want you to go in and. Uh, like I said, we'll, we'll be your partner. We'll go and bid it. We'll work together with you on this, and it doesn't cost you anything for us to do that. We just want to get those deposits, right? So that's how we make our money, be as transparent as I can. Um, like I said, we'll handle the bids for you. We'll handle logistics. We'll handle all that. We need you to provide product and ship it to the jails and handle that, that part of it, and hopefully you make a lot of money doing it. So, well, let's put it this way. I, I was not even in business three years ago, and today I've got 180, 170, 175 jails using this system. So that's how successful we've been in going against them. But here's the thing. Aramark, Keefe, these guys, they're big companies, and they move at the speed of a battleship, you know. So... We're nimble, we're quick, we move fast, we service the jails. Um, you know, by you being hopefully as local as possible, you're going to be really sensitive to making sure the sheriff or whoever it is is getting what it is they want. And so it's really about customer service and just being in front of these guys. You're already doing their vending machines. So obviously you've got a relationship of some sort uh, that I'm assuming you've worked and managed and had a customer service rep deal with, and you know, you've know you already done the hard work. So now it's just a matter of expanding that work. So it's basically upselling your current client. I don't know if you got on that, but that was good. Yeah. Upselling your current client base. That's what we're talking about here. Who do you call on this jail? Who's the decision maker for a program like this? So in county jails, it's, it can be anybody from the sheriff to a county, uh, to a, I'm sorry, a jail administrator. Uh, those two are typically the two people you have to convince, although there's always a secretary in there somewhere who has to actually enter the data and deal with the money, and that's the person that has to, has to be uh, massaged. So uh, that's how those sales typically work. Okay, so the rumor, so the, so the myth in the industry is that they have to go to RFP on all these things. And so that's, in 80% of the cases I hear, they say, well, we've got to go to RFP on this. And they do that, I guess, to cover their, uh, you know, their beyonds. The simple matter is, is they do not have to go to RFP on it, um, but they think they do. So if you want to have that battle and convince them that they don't need to go to RFP, that's, it depends on how good your relationship is, but m most of the time they think they need to go to RFP on these things. But in my, in my experience doing this, the jails are weighing their decisions on this stuff on really two things. How much commission am I going to get back and how much technology are you going to put in here for me? Those are the two answers. And so you shouldn't have any problem winning bids uh, as long as you're willing to you know, hit those commission numbers and adjust your prices accordingly, in my opinion.